can we talk about that Halloween episode? When you got that script and saw what you were going to be doing. Craziness. What was your thought? If you could put that by her. <laughs> Honestly? Give her some, yeah, what there we go. your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Craziness. Yeah. It was a little odd. I, I, well, the thing that's difficult about it is we know it's a fantasy, but you have to play it for reals because otherwise it wouldn't. For reals? Wouldn't work. For reals. Is there an baby. S on the end of that? Oh, yeah, for, for real. reals. Yeah. There is. You gotta play if, you're, it. if you're five. Yeah. Yes. No, you no, no. You gotta no. play it, otherwise, yeah. it, you know, if you play it as if it's not really happening, then it doesn't work. So that was difficult. It's, a, yeah. it's about committing. For sure. Yeah. I in. mean, you had to go there because you had to be a, you get killed and then you're a ghost. <laughs> ghost and corpse. Corpse. The hardest part was the corpse. The part, hardest right? part was the corpse. Holding your breath. Yeah, I'm not so good at holding my breath. Yeah. But you know what? I really love um, um, Robert Scott. Yes. Robert Scott. Robert Scott Wilson. Wilson. I love now him. You got his name. You got it all. I knew all it was Robert, names. but I couldn't think about all the rest of it was. But I love right. him. I think he's amazing, and I wish he was just on the show because I think he's so yeah. good. Yeah, he's great. But they, Sweetheart. he's done so many crazy things on that show. Like when he, when he took the the, the, the midwife out behind the cabin and killed her. I was like, holy cow! This but is crazy. He, I think he's so good. So that was fun. I was happy to have him back. You know, it, it, you know, we get these scripts and we just have to make it work, whatever it is. So we may laugh. You know, as we go along and we're learning it, but when it comes down to doing it, like he said, it's we got 100% commit and get into it. So that's what we did. And I liked him crying over me. I thought that was kind of cool. I know. My eyes were closed. I couldn't see it, but I, I like that. I, are, are we going to see these two get closer? I mean, what's going on with you guys? Good what? Are we going to get closer? Are we going to get closer in upcoming you know storylines or what's Why going on? Are we on? not close? <laughs> You know, it's six we, months we ago. We forget because I it was know. five months ago. What do they say is happening with us? What's happening? <laughs> what do they say is happening? Um, Everything that's happening. Uh, well, of course, we had the Halloween episode. Uh, Kayla's not ready to forgive Trip for what he did to her at the hospital. Of course, getting her suspended. That was a mess. It really was a mess. That was a mess. And really could have killed some people. That was really bad. You know, this it's a very complicated relationship. <laughs> Our family dynamic and, and him being in... And, and Kayla's a very open person, but there's been a lot of things that have happened because of that, you know? And our sweet Joey, you know? So, um, it's going to take a little while. He's wearing stripes. I love our Joey, so... Yeah, he'll be back. Yeah, I hope. I hope he will be. Wait, he, he, she hopes he's going to be back, and you're no, like, he'll be back. No, we don't know. I mean, okay. we just hope. <laughs> but, I, but I did say to, um, you know, the powers that be, just that... I didn't want him to go. He was such a big part of our lives, and I didn't. And we're so into being parents and being family that I didn't want it to. He just. A lot of times, uh, characters leave the show, and we don't even mention their name again. And I said, "Can we please talk about him? And please, I mean, I would love if they let us go visit him in jail, but they haven't done that. But at least we do talk about him and say we've had phone calls with him and different things. So I feel that part's good. I don't. I just it hate it. It keeps him living. Yeah, I think. and I think it's yeah. important. I think that the the Johnson family's important. What about the new writing under Ron? Was that a, a little bit of taking time to adapt to that, or did you guys just go like guns blazing when he came aboard? I, can I jump in? Sure. sure. I think it's interesting, I mean, for us who've been on a continuing drama like this, when the writers change, because um, there's, there's pluses and minuses every time. And, and what was a track uh, can take a total turn. And you the were like tone, the tone of the show can change. Yeah. And, you get a new and we were when we were on General Hospital together, we were like uh, love interests. And then a new writer came, and all of a sudden they decided that we were, there was a secret, and it was that we were brother and sister. So things can really turn. Yeah, that was kind of far. Out. <laughs> that things can really turn. So, yeah. but so far so good. We're happy. Well, fantastic. We are always glad to see you guys, and uh, you. we hope that you're getting closer. Obviously oh, yeah. not right now, but it's. Exactly. We have a very deep foundation, you so do. we'll be okay. I love it. Let's talk about Bonnie, though, because I think, I mean, for you, did you have to go back and watch some tapes and see what it was like to play Bonnie? Yeah, I had to go back through, watch some tapes, figure out, again, you know, because I hadn't worn that skin in a while, and then put together what's happened between that time and there. So I had to kind of, like put together the missing pieces to uh, to where Bonnie is now because she wouldn't have been today she wouldn't have been where she was in 2008 so, so where she grew and 
where she was now. So that was, it was a challenge. It was awesome. You were probably had to do a lot of character study and work, you know, behind the scenes on that. Yeah, yeah, a lot of writing. <laughs> and what kind of journey did she have, like, for you from 2008 to now? Well, you know, she had been in prison. She took the rap for her daughter. So adjusting to prison life, figuring out what scams she could get away with, what she couldn't. You know, what part of her was tamed, what part of her was even drawn out more into a crazy kind of, because there's a whole new pol political system and no way to get away from it in prison. So you got to be on your toes, you got to be thinking. So where she grew, because you, you can get away with more, but you can get away with less in prison. So who she became and hardened, softened, what changed in her heart and mind. That's amazing. It was fun. It was really fun. Yeah, as an actor, that's stuff that you just really want to dig into. Oh, my God. It was so much fun. And I, I love that part of it. And then on the flip side, you have Adrian. Yes. And poor Adrian, you know. <laughs> Can you imagine waking up in prison? you going for a coffee and waking up in prison? What the heck? You're like, this, wait, this isn't me. Yeah. Am I dreaming? Exactly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, and then digging into that because that's the sadder part to the story. Yeah, yeah, and the trauma that, and that's a great, because that was a great growth period for her, something that would never have happened to her, that she had to survive through, adjust to, and how does that change her life now? How does that make her who, who, who she is? As we all do. We have an experience every day that molds us, grows us, changes us. Absolutely. Shortens us, you know? <laughs> And then she's missing Sonny's wedding. She's not finding out about Will. What are your thoughts on that? Well, and, and exactly, being separated from all that, only hearing bits and pieces, and missing great ch a great chunk of her family's life is devastating. It, it's like being in a coma, but worse, because she wasn't in a coma. She was living this nightmare. So, you know, trying to make up for lost time can't, but readjusting into, into life again. So it's crazy. Thank God she was only there for a few months. I know, because I don't know if she and could handle And in solitary more. most of the time. She didn't need to be with general population. <laughs> no, it was scary. <laughs> I know. Let's talk about Justin and Lucas, because some people were not happy about this decision with Justin. Um, and then for Lucas, I mean, are they ever going to be friends again? I think so. I mean, Lucas and Adrian started off as friends. And... I think once he gets through what he's going through, I mean, he'll realize that it really, it was meant to be the way it happened. However, the way it happened wasn't meant to be. Yes. So I think that eventually, because they're both very mature, they both will always care for each other. They'll always be friends. But, you know, he needs to go through his journey now with his alcoholism and where he's going to come out on the other end of that. And she can't help him, and he doesn't want her to help him, and there's nothing she can do. I look forward to that friendship again, though. Me too. I, I love working with I love working with Wally. I'm the luckiest girl. I know. In the world. We get some great co-stars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. One final kind of fun question: If you had to pick one of your co-stars to be stuck on an island with, who would it be? <laughs> oh, male or female? Either one. It's okay. Because it'd have to be a male one and a female. It would be Brian Dottillo because he could, he, he's like MacGyver. He could make anything out of anything and we'd survive. The most fun, <laughs> we'd laugh a lot, would be probably Deidre. <laughs> uh, I, we, we worked together for the last 30 years but never really worked together. And when we worked together, I, I mean, I got to really know her and how much fun she is. So at least if we were trapped on a desert island, it'd be fun. <laughs> you know you'd have a good time. Yes. All right, well, let's talk about Trip because who, in, in your mind, who is Trip? What, what, how I like to describe him is Trip is a, he's a great kid with just a lot of bad tendencies. He's had a lot of bad luck in his life. He's, he's had a lot of things like kind of pull the rug out from under him. And so he's just, he's kind of trying to overcome it all. And he thinks that he's, he's not owed anything. He never would believe he's owed something, but he thinks that whenever something happens, he's, he has to build that barrier up before it's destroyed and so he's just he has a lot of trust issues and but now that he's becoming more mature and more of an adult that he's really seeing that like these people are good people and he has to really have that barrier down to interact and become closer to other people so I think that's really helpful for him who do you think is going to be that key person that's going to really help him break down that barrier 
really, really Steve. I mean, like, just because, like, obviously him and Mary Beth, like, or him and, sorry, not Mary Beth. Like, I, uh, Mary Beth and Steven. In real yes. life. Yeah, in real life. <laughs> um, uh, but, no, like, Kayla and Steve, like, like, because of all that, what happened with between him and Caleb, and that was affecting, you know, their marriage for at first. And I think it's just something that, like, he realizes that he's done it, he's done wrong, and he's realized what he's done. And I think that Steve is really kind of give him that tough love for a bit but then he also gives him that compassion that he really needs that he's actually searching for in his life that he just doesn't have and that's where he's been in lack of his entire life and so I hope he gets it you know he deserves it it's just been such a rough road for him for so long it has been a rough road and like that, that's why I was, telling, I was saying to him earlier I was, I was like I think that's why people enjoy Trip because they realize how tough of a life he's had and People so, have empathy for him. Exactly, I think. and even though he's kind of, he's he done a lot of bad things at first. <laughs> <laughs> we get it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you've moved in yes. with Claire and Theo. Yes. Any sort of like threes company crazy antics going on? I mean, a little bit at first, is but like obviously Theo, a little cold shoulder for at first in a little while, which I understand. You know, new territory, kind of coming. Got to be the alpha dog, but. Uh, but it's kind of yeah, it's a fun time. Like I, that's I love working with those two anyway, just because they're my friends. So like we just get to hang out, and play pretend all day. I think there's a little romance or a little flirtation brewing with Claire, though. I I mean yeah, I mean there's always been a soft spot for Claire because she's always been the one that was nice to him and showed him compassion, convinced him to stay in Salem, and so I think it's just something that he's always held close to his heart. And now that it's like, oh, is she kind of reciprocating this a little bit? Kind of like she's like, is this happening? And then. It's just right now, I think he's he's not sure what to do in this situation. They're all living in the same space, so... It's... It is days of our lives. It is know. days of our lives. There's a lot of stuff that happens. <laughs> like, yeah, there. there really is. Yeah. And I was like, if you put people in the same location... It's... You never know what will happen in that. You <laughs> never know. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. I'm looking forward to that little romance, uh, of course, I think. Of course, you know, you never know. I can't say too much. I don't want to give anything away. But you never know. It's okay if you give it away. You know, we're, we're fine with that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you guys are fine with it. <laughs> Your boss get, is like, yeah. Ron's like, no. I'll get it chewing later on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's start off, and I want to kind of start off with the uh, Halloween episode because you were the catalyst for the entire storyline. What was that like for you? For the, for the Halloween, as far <laughs> this is an awesome <laughs> interview. No, it's so fun. Um, the Halloween, <laughs> it's so fun. Come See, on in. Yeah. Um, sorry, what was the question? Oh, what was it like to be in the middle? Um, so great. I mean, and there's such a, there's so many moments that I got to play with. I mean, and then like hanging out with him and like doing the thing with the kids and eating the candy corn and then the nightmare and everything. Um, it's a ball. It's like you got, I got to go through a whole plethora of things. And it explained the whole necktie killer thing too. So thanks. Oh my gosh. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> no worries whatsoever. For, for you guys, I love this. Just a little video bomb. Welcome. Hi. 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 Good to see y'all. <laughs> Glad to see you're alive. <laughs> yes. Um, but for you guys. It was touch and go for a while. <laughs> it was touch and go. You know, a couple years ago, we were all worried about you. And you know what? We're back three years later, day of days. You're here. Here we are. <laughs> here we are. But talking about you guys, is it going to be smooth sailing for a while or is there some difficulty ahead? It's going <laughs> to. <laughs> it's gonna got be. it. Um, we're smooth sailing for just a couple of months, just for a few months, and then things get really rocky again. Um, but that's ju that's just the nature of soaps. That's just what it is. I mean, we really enjoy um, getting to have the time to show what that what Chad and Abby are as a duo um, when they're happy and they're having a good time and things are good um, because it's 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 kind of rare that we get to do that so much of the soap um, structure is all about the struggle and like getting back to each other and then they get split up and getting back to each other so it, it, we are, we're happy to rest in the in the good time for a in minute. In the sweet moments. Yeah. Have you had like a favorite sweet moment between the two of you? Oh I always love it when he just like comes in and um, like if I'm asleep and he like wakes me up and he brings in you know things for us to eat. We joke a lot that we're like the real life relatable couple because we're always just we're constantly eating in bed like we're, we're for all our love scenes they just like cut away and we're and then we're eating cupcakes You're eating. And eating, <laughs> eating pancakes so um, but yeah the, a lot of those just very simple interactions where we're just still together sitting on a couch having a conversation or still together sitting in the bed having a conversation I just it's fun to communicate the affection and love that they have for each other um, in very sub subtle simple ways you know I'm just wondering if this is the new love triangle on the show that you guys are all alluding to because... Well, I don't think Chad's ever hidden his love for, for Will. 
No. Or or for Sonny. Oh. He'll take anything he can get. Really. <laughs> okay. How do you feel, Chandler? Why well, Chandler I, Massey? I feel less special having heard that second part about taking anything you Chad could get, but. All right. Well, let's let's take it this way. If this was a love triangle on days, how would this play out? Well, yeah, okay, so here's how this is going to work. Play Chandler, who would, would you pick? We, we'd all, <laughs> Me or Billy? No, no, that's not how it played out. We we would all we we would all we would all get a sandals uh, vacation to to Grand Cayman. Um, and we would wear we would wear the the nice robes and we would all just sit there and talk about how we love each other. That would last. That would be like the honeymoon phase. Yeah. Wh- what's no, the, that, would that would be our. That, that the would be. Strife? That would be our. That would be our life. Oh. Well, what, what are the what's stakes? The what's the strife? That's what what's I want to know. What's the strife? Yeah. Uh, the jealousy. The jealousy that that uh, that Chad has between um, Will and Abigail's. No, no, no. Other way around. No, other way around. No, just no. I was just gonna say. No, that's what I'm saying. Is the other way around. Chad, I I'm the one that's. That's d- gonna be brokenhearted because these two are totally gonna be a thing. The strife would be the strife would be like uh, almost like a um, what what are those relationships like a Mormon relationship in the sense that like how many nights a week Chad is in bed. Sister wives. Sister wives. Chad is with is with Will Tuesday Thursday every other weekend. And then the the strife the strife the strife the strife is Abigail wants. We have to I wrap this storyline up, but. Oh, okay, Tuesdays. Okay, that's better. I was gonna say, Will is what Tuesdays. Why are you still here? You're ruining this interview. No, wow. we're glad you're here. You're okay. You're. <laughs> we are glad you're here, but this sister line storyline is, it's cut. Yeah, it's cut. <laughs> but thank you guys. You are literally torn between two lovers. How's and they're it... fighting over me right and now. And they are fighting it. over you. Who do you think he's going to choose? Obviously. Obviously. I don't yeah. know. It's it that's 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 going to be the interesting part because he 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 loves two people, and it's like how do you but choose? Like he loves you know what I mean. He loves two people. He's in love with one person. And he's just kind of like it's pity love for the other. You know what I mean? For, you know, it's not exactly pity love. I mean, we're <laughs> gonna get married. You know. Touche. <laughs> Touche. Touche. And we're really seeing this start to build on the show. I mean, this is gonna be. This isn't like an easy decision where you're like, eh, I'll go with this this direction because you're not the same person, are you? No, no, no. Will has had a lot, a lot of work done, plastic surgeries and things. But emotionally, what have you gone through? Oh, emotionally. <laughs> um, uh, you know, I guess you'll, he doesn't remember anything. You know, he's, so he's kind of like an emotional blank slate. Uh, living in, in Memphis, doing his thing. Um, Basically, thinking his life is one thing when it's obviously completely different. So, yeah, he's he's not like I said. Like um, the relationship is gone, you know. Uh, so it's like starting from scratch. What did you just do over there? Oh. Um, yeah, go ahead. I I I can just tell you this. <sighs> he's just, you know, he's really just in the way of real love, and. I'm just really happy that, that he leaves. In the way of real love. If it's real love, can you actually, can anyone get in the way? What do you think? If someone's getting in the way, maybe it's not real love. You guys are fighting, and then how do you feel? How does Sonny I, feel? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm truly like, it's the right, it's exactly what I'm feeling. I, I, I just feel that I, I, I chose him to spend the rest of my life with, but then he died. And then I had to move on, and I. But I always had that. On this. So people die. People die all the time. You can't hold it against Will that he just died, and then be like, "Oh, I'm moving on because he's dead now." Well, well, let's ask this because you're here for not short term, from what I'm understanding. You're here for a longer haul, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. I'm. I'm, I'm here. I'm. I'm sticking around. <laughs> you're sticking around in Salem. Yeah. It's. It's going to be a maze. Honestly, like. How this all ends up turning out thus far, I don't know past a certain point, but what we what we know is um, people are gonna love it and hate it because it's it's an in, it's interesting how this will all work out. Yeah. Because you got Paulson and Wilson. Yeah, and everyone's got their teams. Everyone has their teams. Yeah. What are you hearing? Because you're the one that's torn between the two of them. What are you hearing from the fans on this? Is um, it 50-50? People, I think it is a. It, 
I gotta say, it was an overwhelming Wilson, like everyone was obsessed with Wilson. And it took a long time for Paulson, I feel, to really become well, a thing. Deck, the, to, to be fair, the deck is stacked against Paulson. You know what I mean? Because you have the two, you, it, like Will and Sonny were the first, where well, they were the original couple. Like, uh, you know, Will came out to Sonny and everything. So you build that foundation, and then you have some guy come in, and it's always going to be an uphill battle to like. But win he did over win them yeah, over, he did, though. He did. Like, like it's it, it's it, it's now a true like. I bet you, if we did a poll, It'd be, we should do that on our Instagram story. Oh, that's a great idea. I love it. We're generating ideas. Fantastic. Paulson Wilson and just see what people... I would love to know how people vote, honestly. Let's do that out there today and see. It's a great one for today, honestly. Really, the what? for the fans. It's a great one for the fans yeah, to do. Yeah, just see the percentage. I, I bet you it's going to be... Um, I bet you it'll be 65-35, Wilson against Paulson. I think it's going to be 17-35. Uh, Which Paulson. totally adds up to 100%. Yeah. <laughs> we know that Eve is returning to town with this secret... And a love interest. What can you tease us with? Well, she did return. She came back last week. She is ex Mrs. Deimos Kyriakis. He has passed away and left her with a bucket load of cash and part of a company. And it's really upset the rest of the Kyriakises. But to Eve's delight, it works for her because she is going to claim her stake in the company. And that's going to cause a lot of chaos, isn't it? Oh, of course. <laughs> the best kind. The best kind. So are you going to sit there and uh, be a thorn in their side now that you've got bucket loads of money? A big thorn in their side. I carry the whole rose bush. <laughs> so it's good. It's good. It's so good. What is she going to be doing for work? Is she going to be back singing, maybe? No, she is part owner of Basic Black, which is a subsidiary of Titan, and much to the rest of the Kyriakis' dismay, she's going to run that, and she's going to, she is the, has the controlling, controlling factor of that company, so that's going to be her baby, and she's going to run with it, and they're going to try to take it away from her. Obviously, there's going to be a big power play. Is she trying to make this company her own? Uh, and make her mark on it, or is it going to be kind of like keep, keeping on with the legacy of that company? I think that she would like it to uh, to be a part of the legacy, but at the same time, if they're trying to remove her from the company, she's going to try to make it her own, and she's got and because Eve is her insecure self, she is going to do everything thing she can to put her mark on it because she needs it to make herself feeling you know give her some validation. Now I have to ask, will we ever see Teresa back in Salem? Will she be joining you at some point? I don't think you should ever say never, because what a great thing that will be for her to come back. Um, but I don't see it on the in the near future by any stretch. But I, I think once maybe Eve gets established, I think it would be a really good move for them. But absolutely, you never say never. I didn't know I was going to be coming back, so I was very happy. I know. What is it like for you to be back? I mean, it's just everyone is so happy on the fan side to see you back. But how has it been for you? It's been really, really wonderful. You know, I literally walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So it's, I'm, I walk in gratitude to be back doing something that I love. I love daytime. It's never been a secret. I mean, I'm very thrilled to be working. And especially this show in particular has such heart and soul and every actor on this show is just phenomenal and has been so generous and kind and the fans have been terrific too. Yeah, you had mentioned that I had seen you at uh, during primetime Emmy season but they had a daytime Emmy celebration right. and you were talking about the support not only from your cast and crew sure. but also that the fans and the outreach that they had. Of course, you know, Cancer touches so many lives. And you know, soap operas tell stories of, of women, men, children battling some form of cancer throughout a, a year arc of a story many times. But when you're really going through it, and with social media now, I mean, I had so many people reaching out saying, I'm with you, I've been there, my mother, my father, my whatever. It's just, it's nice to feel connected in that way and know you have that prayer support. I'm a true believer in prayer, and I know that prayer carried me through. And God has been present from the minute I was diagnosed and to me even walking in this building here today. It's, I feel His presence, and I feel His love through fans 
and just through life. It's very surreal. I uh, um, I was looking at my phone and I sent this morning. I was having my my little quiet time. And I sent my parents a picture this time last year. This time last year, I was getting ready to start my last and final round of chemo. I didn't have any hair. And I just st I stated, it was also uh, Veterans Day. So I sent a picture of mom and dad on that day of last year and then my picture. And I said, a lot has happened in a year. And I can't believe I'm back. Well, we are so Thank you. happy to see Thank you back, you. honestly. Thank you. Thank you Thank so you. much. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks. I'm I'm happy. Keep watching. How are you? Hi. I'm good. I, but really, is, really Brady, how am I? is Brady good? So when I say I'm good, you're looking at me going, You're good. Dude, come on. Right. <laughs> I know you're good. Eric, Eric is Eric good. Eric is doing all right. Brady, uh, Brady's been better. Of course, then again, has he been better? I mean, the guy has been... He's More been unlucky in love than any dude I've ever seen in my life. Nicole put him through the ringer. Come on. How did you feel about that? What, what side of the fence did you follow? I find it interesting that fans are siding with Eric more than Brady, but Brady's the victim. Why wouldn't you side with Brady on this? It's, it's hard. It's hard. I think you have the sentimentality of the, uh, the first love, the Eric and Nicole thing that people remember and want to believe in. That that never dies, you know. But for but the past for the past nine months, you've been watching Brady give up everything he has in order to make Nicole's life more enriching and better. I mean, he whisked her away to Canada to keep her away from the cops. He was instrumental in helping her find her daughter. I mean, and then to have her cheat on him with his brother, that was pretty rough. So I see both sides as well. But in but real life. I'd still oh I'd my be God. on I mean, I'd be on your side. I think so. If my brother did that to me, I think I'd be rightfully mad at those parties involved. Yes. Do you think that this incident is going to bring out the dark Brady like more and more? Is he going back to the dark side with this? Brady's an addict. He's always going to be an addict. He's always going to resort to reacting emotionally and he's always going to lash out. And this is probably one of the most disturbing heartbreaks that he's ever had, given what he put into it and how it ended. He's broken right now. He's going to search for things to fill that hole, whether that's Titan, whether that's another woman. That remains to be seen. But he doesn't like to stay alone very long. I know that. He's he tends to get searching. himself involved in something usually very quickly. He doesn't stay silent very long, but he's going to wallow. Um, but I think I, I would love to tell you more information. But you know, I can't. I don't want to spoil but, but the story. But you can, but you just can't. <laughs> I can, but I can't. I, like I um, said, I'm, I can I'm tell you that that Eve Donovan coming into the picture is interesting. She she's a very formidable foe for Brady, and she's tough as nails. And Cassie's a great actress and. We're having a lot of fun bouncing off one another. She shakes right things now. up when she comes she's on the shaking, scene. Yeah. She's shaking the batter, you know. What about Tate? This is what I always wonder. Like, <laughs> what what's happening Tate? with your poor child? He's, right now, he's a boy that's been abandoned by his mother, you know. And this is something that happens in life. Sometimes a parent leaves a kid's world and the kid is left wondering why. Can't understand, but... Uh, Brady's gonna have to step up his his fatherly skills and and who knows if Teresa will ever come back Fingers crossed. One never knows. We never know in Salem. Even she doesn't know <laughs> But she could know if you know and could tell us stay tuned What I love about your dynamic obviously there's a lot of banter there's flirtation But there's also vulnerability with Kate towards Andre. How has that dynamic been able to play out? Interesting. I, I think in some ways I'm trying to because you know we did we did do the scenes I think you're talking about a good six months ago. Right. So you kind of have to go back to you know to right. that place. Um, Tay and I I think do work in a similar way. You know you read your scenes, you do your homework, you memorize the lines, and then we you know on set 
you kind of almost let all of that go and it gets very much into the moment of what's going to affect you in that moment. And um, in this, that scene where I think we particularly connected on an emotional, vulnerable level, I mean, I, I, I hadn't predetermined that. It's just what happened, you know. And, it, and um, I, I think because we work in a similar way, then that changes the response of your partner. And then allowed, that deepens you know, our relationship. We also things. allowed the element of surprise. We also allowed the element of surprise in the scene. Um, and that's the discovery of... Because the good thing working with Lauren uh, is that we're prepared. Uh, we take our time learning um, the lines pretty well. And then what we do is and then we get dressed the way we like, you know, which <laughs> sometimes I, I'm a little impatient, you know, because women take a little longer than men to get no. ready. No. I don't think that's no, no. I don't no. Think no. no. I said, remember one time it, I went into wardrobe and I started makeup and I said, oh my God, girls, if you spend as much time in your scenes as you do in your makeup, we'd have better performances. Well, two of the actresses walked out of the room. So um, I, I do disturb. But sometimes I do it on purpose. It's to shift people, especially when I think they're taking things for granted. So it's, um, you know, it's a, it's we're in a good place. And and the thing and, is, and just for the record, men do spend as much time. I was going to say, <laughs> I mean, we got to stand up for ourselves. That's <laughs> right. I've just heard a few men that much. <laughs> just as much. Yeah, we heard that. Okay, we're good. <laughs> was there anything else you want to add to that? Well, let's we see. It? Keep on going. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, yeah, but well, this is why the, the dynamic right. works for well, you guys. The thing is, too, I mean, you know, we're on opposite spectrum in, in, in areas of life, uh, but at the same time, we're able to not take each other for granted in those areas or to judge people in those areas. Um, what I think works in Element is that we're our own people, individual selves, uh, that, we're, that have taken years to develop. And because we also have certain insights and, you know, uh, I'm a born Voyager and, uh, and so is she. And so, you know, we both like good things. Now she's a vegetarian, so that gets boring. Uh, so, vegan. Vegan, okay. Uh, she's a vegan. But anyway. And he disapproves, clearly. <laughs> clearly. He wants you to eat a steak, I guess. <laughs> no, Do you want her to eat steak? or No, a fish with a head a on. A fish with a head on. Okay. Yeah. Because that will be happening. But I love this. Like the chemistry off screen, though, translates very, to it on is, screen. It's very true. He, he it, gives you a hard is, time, but it's great. It is true. With, with his, with always with a sense of humor. It, it's great fun. And it's, it, you know, and it, it really does keep it alive, you know, and, and it gives it a certain challenge that I think that, that you need, you know. Although I think we are kind of blessed with also playing characters who can. Um, Exercise yeah, those elements. Yeah, you uh, can. And, and yeah. I, she was only being mad at me once that I know of. Uh, what did you do to make her angry? Uh, Dish. You want to talk about that? Well, it was an interesting dynamic, really. Well, so it kind of ties, it ties into what you were saying about in the makeup room. Yes, yeah. So uh, we got in a little bit of a half. A bit in a half, excuse me. Uh, uh, because everything was taking too long and, and about rehearsing, getting the lines, whatever. But let, let, let me do my part, finished. though. Oh, you'll have let a me, chance. Let me you'll do my chance. part, though, because part me? of me getting in a rush. Look, she's touching me now like it means something. <laughs> she's like, hold on, my part. <laughs> my part, too. I know. But part I know. of that right. is running lines. See, I, this is where we have a difference. Because there is so much to do in the morning. It's like what you were talking about before. We do everything so quickly. So we're getting made up. We have to have our wardrobe fitting. And somehow we have to fit in running our lines. So for me, I kind of like distraction. Because if I can do all of my lines with distraction, I know it's here. This one likes peace and quiet. And when that show aired, I could see in her face the annoyance that I created for her that day. And she was so... But it fed the scene. It was really interesting because it... There was no mistake, it had a certain dramatic element, an underlying element that was beginning to surface. And what we ended up doing, when we did that, we finished, she still wasn't talking to me. The next day, uh, because Nikki, who does my makeup, which is, which is Lauren's husband, who's one of our favorites, he's, he said to me, do something, you know. So I looked at it, and she, she was like up in the thing, and I said, darling, how are you? It's been so long. And she cracked up. 
I love that. Now, can we go back and look at the scene? Can you tell us what scene it was? I can tell you what scene. I mean, I remember I had my hair braided. <laughs> I always remember to the Yes. Wardrobe. It was a scene, and I had like a white shirt on with like yeah. a little print on it, and it was a confrontational scene. Yeah. Too. Was it after um, I threw food? Was it that scene? Where we threw food in your clothes? No. No. Oh, no, it okay. wasn't that one. Damn that name. I think I. <laughs> Huh? All right, well, we're going we're gonna to have fans going back they looking will. for the I braided hair. hair. Because I remember we were over near the side, near the desk. I'm trying to remember what it was on. But it did bring a different dynamic. And yeah, then I think you did say you were sorry. Because remember, you walked out of the dressing room and you wouldn't rehearse to make it for Oh, uh, yeah. I, I've learned the tricks. You've learned the tricks. Ah, I love this between you two. No, but this, is, this really explains a lot between your two characters. <laughs> and it really is wonderful, yeah, honestly. It's not an accident. It's not an accident and... It's not an act, it's authentic. It's authentic, oh no. It's authentic, that's good though. At least when she goes home and she's got to write her diary, at least the page is not empty. We're gonna start off with the Halloween episode when you guys <laughs> got that script where you're like, what the heck? Yes, <laughs> completely. Yes, Nothing what was your initial reaction like go going through it? Um, am I getting kills off the show? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> no, like, I know, because you're kind of like, I die, so. No, I was like, wait a minute, am I really? No one told but then, me. <laughs> but then, no, it was a dream, you know. So it, it, um, it was fun. I mean, I, I liked that. I don't know. I, I liked it. It was fun. Yeah. And we, True was also there. Yeah. So Paige, that was, was that fun having back. her back? It was fun, and it, it, it was, it was. It's funny too because I really didn't even know what was going on, and I live with her, you know. <laughs> and she didn't let you know at all. No, not really. <laughs> wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> um. You just handed me that, and I lost what I was going to say. What? <laughs> well, she didn't let you know what was happening on her end. Yeah. Um, we, 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 we both didn't know, and um, I didn't know whether it was a Halloween episode. I didn't know if she was coming back. I'm like, are you coming Are you coming back to the show? Like, You're not telling me anything. <laughs> You're like, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Some yeah. spoilers, please. But it was funny. It was fun, man. It was, a, it was a lot of fun. I feel like, given the circumstance of the scene, like... She did a great job with it too. Like I, I love how she's just like picking the blood off the fork, off the pitchfork. She went. For it was it. so it, great. Man. Well, you kind of have to with a script like that. You just have to go all the way and not think about it or anything yeah, else like absolutely. that. And it's the only time you're okay with dying because you're like, I know I'm not really yeah. dead. You know what I mean? So you can right. enjoy it. So you can enjoy it and you go yeah. all out. You're like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do I'm this. gonna die. I'm gonna die. <laughs> like, I'm gonna gonna die but I still have a job. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's so great yeah. about it. Well, obviously, the dynamic uh, with your characters right now is really kind of interesting. And I mean, how about for you, as a man, having your girlfriend get your job back for you? I mean, that's a lot. Yeah. Um, did you get my job back for really me? Enjoy, I didn't really get you my ass. Job back. I mean, I, you helped. I okay. I put. I helped. I like you. Know, I helped. <laughs> <laughs> I helped a little bit, but it was really, you know. Been? Huh? Was this the whole Ben thing when I got? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it was really, you know, um, Hope's. Yes. Commissioner Hope Final at the time. Decision um, and, yeah. But I mean, yes, I did go because I, you know, Lonnie, she really loves JJ and she knows how, how amazing he is and what a great cop he is. So, yeah, she wanted to go in there and put in a, a good word for him, but, you put know. Her two cents. Thank you, baby. You know, you're welcome, boo. <laughs> but then it get, you're, you're back in the job and then it gets really complicated. I mean, the dynamic. Go back on the job. <laughs> yes. And then, turns out I'm not so okay up there, you know? And like, you're shooting her brother. Her brother. But he. Yeah. Terrible, right? Like, how do you. Yeah. How do we go. You, you can't sit down and go, how do we go about this? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. It's. I don't know, man. It, it, it gets crazy and it gets really, really heavy after at the, all the aftermath of everything. Yeah. I think, yeah. You gotta take it one day at a time with that and you gotta like you said earlier you have to look at the logistics of it all like what we were out there doing you know we were we were working you know and then the personal that yeah you really I'm have sure to go something like this has happened in oh. real life small town probably it's, it's had to have happened like you would think I think absolutely I think oh so. in this crazy world something I think happened so. oh yeah absolutely yeah Wait. it has to happen and you have to, it's, it's how did you so handle deep. It? <laughs> I know, how would you yeah. handle it? <laughs> what would you do? <laughs> it's so deep, you have to go through it. Yeah. You can't go around it. Yeah. You know? Totally. You're like, that's your brother, that's your boyfriend. Yeah, it's hard. It was a, that was a really, ah, it was, emo, this was an emotional moment. Yeah. You have to, I had to allow my, myself to experience 
all of that, like what he did, but also, you know, being in love with JJ and then the thought of losing my brother, the fact that my, my boyfriend did it, it's a lot of emotions there. And then you wait to see, you know, Daddy James. <laughs> oh, yes. Ah. You know, He's a force. He uh, is, um, woo <laughs> <laughs> He's so wonderful. I love him. I feel like I've been through it with you all year with your relationships and everything. We've talked a lot about your love triangle, but now I want to know how you guys are going to fit into each other's lives. What's going to happen? Well, I think it's a bit of slow progression. Um, you've definitely seen Eli enter Gabby's life in a very interesting way. He comes in kind of like, look, I know you got a lot of drama. I'm trying to ease it. Okay, I'm trying to ease the drama. But he ends up adding a little bit just because he complicates my emotions, you know, in my head with other things. <laughs> what are you doing to Gabby? Come on. You really know. Enjoy. She's been through it with that love triangle. I'm trying to sprinkle a little bit of magic on there and have her work out some kind of way. You know, but it, it seems, you know, it seems like it's working right now. It seems like it's working right now. So I, I think Eli's doing something right. I don't think he's pressing too hard because yeah. he knows that her heart is still in a very sensitive place. So I think that's what Gabby likes about him, that she finds comfort in his easiness. Now, that's a good question about Gabby, especially, you know, she's been through it so much and so long with this love triangle. How is she feeling? Does she still have lingering feelings or is she easing her way over to Eli? I'll tell you this. Um, if you see the scene that aired last week where Chad and Abigail are kissing in the Brady pub and Gabby sees it, you know very well she's not over it one bit. You know, she... Gabby and Chad had a very lustful relationship that was, you know, just very intensely timed out perfectly because we had had so many years of no physical connection, none even holding, nothing, nothing at all, to full on, I want to touch you all over. It became intense, you know, and that intensity still exists within Gabby when she sees him, and that is very painful. It's, yeah, it's kind of sad. It's kind of heartbreaking in, yeah, in a certain way. Yeah, it is, because she knows it's wrong. She, she knows that where he is is where he needs to be. Exactly. He's in the right place. Yeah. For you, you've gone from the FBI to Salem. Yeah. How was that transition? Because that's a big time difference. Yeah, you know, uh, when, I, when I did get the script, because I was wondering once I was fired, uh, once Eli was fired from the FBI, I was wondering, I was like, are they going to make him commissioner? It makes sense. If you're an FBI, you would think he would go into uh, this police commissioner higher ranking yeah they dropped his butt right on down and you know involved him with the, you know he was became a salem pd officer but it's fine you know i'm working with uh with galen on the show and i, I love working with that guy i absolutely love working with that guy and i'm having a great time that is awesome hi we love it when pity people video ball. Oh. i just <laughs> saw your little booty i did <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> I did. I did. All right. Um, one final question, and this one's for you on this one. Shag, Mary, kill. Ready? Eli, JJ, Chad. I know. I'm going to tell you this much. I'm going to kill Chad. Get him out. I'm going to get him out so that yeah, I don't have to deal with that anymore. Hasn't he? Yeah. Honestly, I think it'll be a relief. You know, like, whew, that hot ass piece of ass out the picture. We're good. <laughs> I don't have to deal with that anymore. And then, what was it, Shag? Shag and Mary. Mary, okay. Mm. Are you going to marry I think I need to, ah, oh, dang it, dang, that's a, tough, that's a toughie. And who are you, Shag JJ? I'm Mary, I'll marry, I'll marry the Eli, oh, and I'll nice. Shag the JJ. I love it, that's a good one. You can't get any better than that. Thank you, guys. All right, I, I have to ask, because I feel like every year, we're always like, when is Abe going to have a love life? <laughs> and finally, now, finally, now I, it's yes. nice to see you once a year and go, we got you a love life. Yes, yes, yes. yes oh, yeah, yeah, when you yeah. did these there's last year. There's always a different hint. Every year, there's this person and that person, but uh, I think we will, without question, this will be the same question next year. Will be uh, the question next year will be different. What uh -huh. is happening with your what's happening between the two of you? Yeah. So what's going question. on with these two? You know. Well, you know, Abe does know that Valerie likes diamonds. <laughs> and so, like, who, who got in a little trouble over that. <laughs> got in a little trouble over that. A little that. tricky, but you know, he's uh, yeah. heading in the right yeah. direction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously.
obviously we've got the the big situation with you where your son is yes. shot. Yes. Yes. How yes. are you going to yeah. help him through? He's going to need some emotional well, support. For sure, emotionally, Valerie will be helping the aide get through this professionally as a, in, in, as, as, a, as a surgeon. She'll also be um, involved in the healing process of Theo, but that will also get a little tricky. It, it's some very tricky times ahead. Yeah. It's going to be a really tricky time. and. Uh, you know, Valerie actually, I think, does a wonderful job in trying to help Abe go through this. But it's very, he's not making it easy for her. No, he's he he's does not make it easy for her he, at all. He's 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 coming through some really hard yeah. times. But you know, Valerie is the kind of woman who really gets her man. She really understands <laughs> what he needs and how to you know balance him. She's a good and woman. Abe Appreciates that. He needs that in much. his life. He's, yeah, he's, he's you're a little, little stubborn yeah, yeah. to uh, warm up to this. Yeah, uh, the, absolutely. I mean, this, come on. It takes a, you know, but she's, she's there. You've got a gorgeous love interest. <laughs> yes, I do. And a yes, smart I do. one, too. Yes, yes, yes. Abe's a very fortunate man. Thank you. <laughs> I know. Well, I'm interested to see how that will play out because obviously your daughter is also dating the man who shot your son. Yes. Yeah, that never makes things easy, does it? When the uh, no. when the boyfriend is the one who did the deed. Do and, you sit uh, there and put your foot down and go, this this can't happen? Or I think you're going to see a lot of that. I think you're going to see a lot of that. It, you know, uh, the, the the Abe's reaction is is so full of complications. Uh, there, there, there's so many different levels of, of the way and layers of his, his, his reaction, and, and all of them are very human and very real and, and very heartfelt. So you're going to, there are going to be very few people that are going to escape his, his glare. Let's say, you know, I was going to use a more, more ballistic term, but it's probably not appropriate. <laughs> his wrath. <laughs> the storyline really speaks to what's going on today in terms of Black Lives Matter and in terms of like really identifying uh, how important it is to have sensitivity around uh, around this this subject and, and how it affects the community of Salem and that sort of being a reflection of this being part of our American cultural conversation and the fact that JJ is someone that we love and and Theo is someone that we love and JJ is all complicated and and you know a gag that this is someone he, he, he loves, who he shot, he, the brother of someone he loves. You know, it's really. I love that it really shows how all how we're all connected yeah. to each other, and this is everybody is somebody's son. As you were saying in the other interview, JJ has been like a son. JJ has been like a son to Abe, and yes, it, race connects everybody in in uh, in this country. Everybody is connected in more ways than people and know. We're all right. each other's <laughs> and, it, yes, in that exactly. Way. Because everybody and this got story a son. Shows that. Everybody wants to feel that their lives yeah. matter and that they're safe and that your children. You know, can live in a world, and and that every that the police are here to protect all of us. So I really love that the the the, the, the writing staff really brought, brought this out in a way that really affects us all in a really amazing way. And way. hopefully, it'll open some people's minds. I think I to understanding yeah. it, and you, I think you, that's really important. You hope. Well, well I just hope they are yeah. so connected to us. They are connected to the characters, and and the, the way the story develops. It's about these characters in Salem. The way it develops and what we do reflects what happens outside of Salem uh, in the world that we live in but the fact that the audience is looking at us and it reflects their world through our through our eyes and our performances and, uh, uh, and it, it will be very it will be uh, it, it's important it's important for us to give them as much truth as we can with yeah them. I feel like you guys have really been through it Really? What is it going to take? Oh, you haven't seen anything yet. So there's more. A lot yes. of fun coming. Yes. A lot of unpredictability. A lot of unexpected situations. A lot of happiness and joy and tears. So the wedding day gets set. Maybe. Maybe? Maybe. I mean, if you would just say yes. Maybe. What is Hope's hesitation here? Great question, by the way. That is such a really valid question. What's the hesitation? Honestly, I don't. I don't honestly know if Hope knows herself. Hypothetically, she, you know, she doesn't want to ruin a good thing. Um, and I believe, as she said during one of their scenes, why can't we just, you know, be on our honeymoon every day? 
How does that make your character feel? Because you want to marry her. I want to believe everything that she says. And um, so, I mean, I feel like there's conflict there, obviously, mm -hmm. inherently with what I want her to say and what she does say. But, but do you I, doubt her? Do you doubt Hope's love? No, not for a moment. I just think that she's obviously she's had a tenuous history, but so is Rafe. Mm -hmm. And so I think that from his point of view, like, well, if I can get over it, why can't you? Get a little therapy session. Let's talk this <laughs> out. Yeah. Oh, That's right. We need to get to they the bottom. Are, they're very good communicators um, mm -hmm. a majority of the time. But sometimes things are said and misinterpreted. Um, which I have to say really does propel Hope to figure out and finally realize why she will not, or why she has not agreed to a wedding date, um, which you'll find out soon. Oh, I love this. So this is this is the little secret that of why you haven't been committing 100% to him. Oh, she's committed 100%. I guess the final step, the final marriage step. Yes. Yes. Which is the payoff, I think, for, for viewers all the time, because mm -hmm. we want the wedding all the mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And so that wedding may have a few, few hiccups, or it may not happen at all, right? Or it may have none. Mm. True. Interesting. How, how has it been for you guys? Um, obviously, you guys have ridden through so many different writing regimes. How has it been with Ron on board? Has it been a smooth transition, or has it been one for the, everyone has to adapt to? No, absolutely. I think it's been smooth. Yeah, it's been fun. I mean, um, and having Sherry Anderson on board um, has been amazing because she knows the history and, and Ryan's still there. I mean, I think we have a fantastic team. Yeah, I mean, I know firsthand that they that Ron studied the show, that he knew the show inside and out and was working on the show before he actually even began writing. And so mm -hmm. that led to uh, a, a good transition. And like I said like the stuff that's coming up has been so fun to shoot and work through like there's just a lot that happens and I mean speaking for myself I really enjoyed the journey mm -hmm. does that Absolutely. matter to you guys because I know for for me as a viewer it matters when someone has done the research and stayed true to the characters mm -hmm. especially the ones that have been around for so mm -hmm. long mm -hmm. and we know that they're on a chorus of how they would act and behave mm -hmm. sometimes when someone comes in and, and goes so far left we're like what the heck just happened mm -hmm. do you guys appreciate that as actors oh my gosh are you kidding absolutely absolutely because I mean honestly I mean no one knows your character better than you do and the same with me knowing the history and the nuances and the details I mean everything is really so in the details because the audience pays attention you are very smart and you should you know have a show that you know honors that honestly absolutely yeah absolutely it's so important and I believe that we fight for that always Lucas is still fighting those demons. I I've got to imagine when you go to work every single day, it's something you probably have to leave behind, don't you? Because you can't like go home and be like, all right. No, my demons follow me everywhere. <laughs> no matter where I go, there they are. Hey, Mo. Even uh, no. Lucas's demons are following you? Yeah, Lu <laughs> and Brian's. Uh, Lucas has demons, yeah, poor guy. He's just trying to live a normal life and everything bad keeps happening to him. What's it going to take to get him back on that, that good path, that good track? The love of the right woman. Just, just saying. Could that be Chloe? I don't you know. You guys have a friendship. I, we are friends. friends. We used to be married. We used to be married. And I think, you know, oftentimes, you know, you look back at your relationships you've had in your life and you're like, oh, maybe, maybe, I don't know. So maybe, maybe, I don't know. Well, how do you feel with, with Chloe? Does Chloe have the door open? Maybe a little crack? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Yes, there's a crack open with <laughs> Chloe. What? That did not sound appropriate at all. Mm, that's okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that there's endless possibilities for Chloe because obviously she's grown up a lot and changed and evolved for some better some worse but she's just a different person now and um, 
I think she's open to any possibilities because the character's been through a lot in the last couple of years. Um, and so I think that she's probably definitely very open <laughs> to, I was like, oh, hi, Olivia. I thought she was sitting with us. Um, yeah, I think that anything could happen and there could be some surprises in store. We've got the whole Will storyline coming through. This is a big one, too. So this is going to be a lot of twists and turns for you. Uh -huh. um, what should viewers brace for? The unexpected. And when you think you have it figured out, the storyline, then something else is going to change. And you don't have it figured out. So it's not predictable it at all. It is not predictable. No. At least when I saw things, the way they were going, I was like, wow, that's refreshingly cool. You know, it's a good way to kind of either they extend storylines or they're quicker to sum some up and get to other ones and branch off into other ones. And usually we have separate storylines, but now we kind of are all under the same umbrella. So it's really cool that each individual storyline kind of leads up to a bigger storyline that involves everybody. It seems very cohesive, honestly, right. with it everything is. that's been, been happening with Ron coming aboard and obviously doing his research to the characters and knowing where you guys have been previously and where you need to go. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely, he, he's, he's, like, done, yes. he, he's done his homework. <laughs> he definitely has. But I think he also adds an unexpected element that usually in the past might have been a little bit more predictable. And Allie's back. No. It seems like you guys have just fallen right no, back that, into no, the swing of things. <laughs> Thank you. That was good. You looked at me like that answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, honey, no. Uh, sorry. No, I'm just look. I'm You're just like no, I'm just it's mediocre. Staring at you. You're looking going, <laughs> Your hair is out of control. I know that's what you're thinking. My God, Brian, your hair. She told me the other day, like, you know, you have enough hair for three people. And that's I was like, good. Oh, but okay. you know, nice thick hair is a good thing. You do too. You both it's have thick, really thick nice hair. hair. Yeah, we're the hair couple. Yeah, <laughs> we're, like, couple. We're, we're like we're we're like we're like GFS. Hairography on the set. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Just quickly, because I know Walker has to jump in here. But uh, how's it been like working with Allie back on set? I mean, you guys slide right back into it. it. Yeah, it's no matter how much time goes by, we always seem to kind of have, you know, similar rhythms or know each other's tone or whatever. But, um, yeah, I wish she stayed longer. I think we all do, too. And congratulations. Thank you. Baby number two. Yes. Lots of babies. I know. I love that, though. Is your son enjoying being a big brother? Uh, is he enjoying the big brother? or Being the big brother. Oh, being the big brother. Uh, yeah. No. He's not. No, no. Oh, I love that. He is, <laughs> he's he very, he is very jealous. <laughs> and we try to keep what we call murder weapons away from him. Like my husband and I are like, are there murder weapons around? Because... <laughs> He, he's got. He's gotten better. He's gotten better. Like now, he will try to like give him a hug or a kiss because he knows that we'll go, like praise him for it. But if he, you know, thinks we're not looking, he'll sort of like walk by and just like swat him, <laughs> like smack he him. He enjoyed in the head. being the only child for a while there. It's the only beginning. Yeah, he's just yeah. He doesn't. He, he he doesn't even quite know what the younger brother is. Or now he does. Now he's like, oh, it's another person. And he's getting more attention. And he's not going away. He's not, he's not going away. Yeah. yeah. Welcome back. We missed you. Oh, thank you. Are you back to taping the show full time? Back, yeah. Well, as long as they'll have me. We, well, we want to see you. So we want right. We want to see the two of you together. And we keep thinking that wedding date. I want to see the two date. of us together. I know. You got an in with the writers? <laughs> <laughs> You guys are the best. Is that wedding? Is that wedding happening? Um, well, wait a minute. <laughs> is it happening now? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Stay tuned. I like that. There you go. I, you know. We I think there's having, a wedding in our future. Yeah, yeah, we're all ready for this. We really are, mm -hmm. honestly, the viewers. I know. We're, we're ready for the wedding. We're ready for the romance to continue on. I think there's going to be a, a few things that are going to keep, like, pushing it off just a little bit. I mean, not anything between because of problems with us, but just other outside factors come in that kind of, like, have an emergency, let's say, you know, those type of things. 
Well, but, he's got um, Brady going through it, too. And obviously, you know, you've had the Brady, Eric, Nicole situation. Right. I mean, that probably adds a little bit of drama. Sure, sure. Yeah, we, we had we had some nice scenes playing that, the touch and go with Brady's life. And, and then there's the Nicole situation that my son's got to clean up. And, um, and then we move right into another adventure and then another adventure and then another adventure. And we got... We got that Hattie, crazy Hattie. I mean, what the hell's going on with that? That's right. And yeah. You're playing dual roles, which we know is delicious. Your sister played Hattie at some point. Did you get a few pointers from her? Hattie was delicious, and my sister originated the character. And um, uh, she was, she's a special education teacher and has no inhibitions. I mean, to teach special ed, you've got to get up there and be wild and crazy and adventurous and brave. And that's what she brought to Hattie. So when I got to play her, because she couldn't return, um, it, it, it made me dig a little deeper to find her. And then, of course, she became crazy, and then she hooked up with Bonnie, and then she was in jail, and so much fun, so much fun. I'm so happy to be here with you guys this year and not having to say, are you guys still on a cruise somewhere? Oh, no more cruising. Thank you so much. Um, Doug and Julie were um, very deeply involved from 1970 to 1984. When Susan and I, uh, I would say, had a, a, an artistic difference and complained about the writing. And they dropped us off the show immediately, uh, teaching us a lesson. We've been back a little bit and back and away and back and a little bit. And now we are... <coughs> We are really involved in the show. And what an exciting thing that is to be really, really a part of it. Not just to say, Merry Christmas and I hope you're okay. And I have, this, uh, I have this platter of cookies. I'll take it into the kitchen now. Right. There were years when we did three episodes in a year. Yeah. Is all. So it's a thrill to be present. It's a thrill to be meeting you to be meeting the fans as a living member of the show right. rather than an ephemeral memory of days gone by. Right. The best thing that's happened in this past year is of course the resurrection of Doug's place as an actual yeah. place with actual Doug in it and Julie standing by and Chloe making trouble every minute. That yes. is a wonderful storyline for us. We're real pleased about that. Well, it's wonderful because it's a vital storyline, and I think it's almost a disservice and an insult to the fans to not have all of these characters here in the mix. That's right. And then you have someone that comes aboard and does the research and understands where the characters came from and brings everyone back because that's what we want to watch. That's right, and it also brings back all those wonderful memories of the, the decade of Doug's Place. That's right. And you know, I think too, there's so much going on in this world right now. Having an hour to escape and go, look, Doug's place is here. They're back. How we well you this. put that. Yes, we're in a very difficult time in our country and in fact in the world, in our local communities. It's not an easy time. And if we can take your mind as a viewer away for one hour a day, good for us. Not that there isn't excitement, tension, violence, drama going on on Days of Our Lives. That's going on too. But you and I both know that the heart of soap opera is the romance of it. It's people caring about people for many reasons. Right. And I think the show has recaptured that beautifully. It's that magic that we yeah. all were drawn to. And yep. it's, it's That's there. It. And I know you guys are there for Christmas and yes. beyond. And beyond. This is just not a, a lot of We're dropping in for the holiday. That's yeah. right. So any little drama that you guys want to tease us with that's coming up? <laughs> There's a lot of wonderful drama coming up that involves hope and the destiny that you think will be happening for hope and what happens to that destiny. And also we have some characters returning. The return of some very strong and powerful characters. Louise Sorrell comes back with a vengeance this year. You're going to love it. You're going to love her hats. If you were just watching for Vivian's hats, it would be worth tuning in. Having Chandler Massey is wonderful. Yeah, love having him back on the show. Yeah, yes. golden, golden. Having Allison Sweeney. 
golden, golden. Yeah, wonderful.